This is a Pioneer SX-V200 stereo receiver. I picked this thing up at a local thrift shop for a few dollars and thought it would be fun to play with. This particular model came out I believe in 1984 so it is a few years old but it's actually pretty nice for I guess we'd say entry level or more mid-level stereo system but it had a problem. This stereo has eight station memory and whenever the power would get unplugged, it would immediately lose all the memory. You'd have to go back and reset them all again. It turns out that this stereo uses what's called a supercapacitor, also known as low leakage capacitor, to provide power to a memory chip. Those capacitors can be fairly unreliable and uh, fail and they need to be replaced. Now, I'm making this video after having done that, but I'm going to go back and show you where it is and how to get to it because I don't see any, couldn't find anything else on the internet about it. I figure somebody else might run into the same problem. So we're going to start by opening it up. Now this device is held together by just a gigantic number of screws. It just takes a long time to just get through them all. The top plate is held by three, one here, one here, and one here. I'm going to go ahead and take those out. Okay, now those screws have been removed and then you can just you, you, pull, you pull these out a little bit and then up and back and away. Get a look at the insides. Now there's two screws here, two screws here, two screws here, and a screw here and 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 just all over the place. You just got to pull them all out plus, you know, screws on either side here and here. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and pull all those screws. Okay, we've pulled out 18 screws so far. Now this back plate is now loose. And that input card is loose. And we have one little screw here holding on this board. That screw is right there and that's going to have to come off. Now with that screw removed, I can lift up this board. And right there at my fingertip, there's your memory capacitor. I'm going to loosen up this face plate here to give us a little more room. Expose things a little more. There's one on either side. Now we got that face plate a little looser. In order to get to this capacitor, we have to loosen up some screws. There's one here and there's another one over here. Got to loosen those up. Lift up this board. Now with those screws out, this main board is now loose. And we can uh, expose things a little bit better. Now with this board loose, you don't have to go too much further. You really don't have to tear it down completely. As long as you can get access, right where my finger is, that's, that's, that's where that capacitor comes through, okay? If you can desolder those two points right there, you can remove this capacitor. Now, this memory capacitor is 5.5 volt, 0 0.047 farad. You replace that, and your memory will be good again. This is an example of a supercapacitor. This is a typical 0 0.047 farad, 5.5 volt supercapacitor. It's 11 millimeters in diameter. With the way the pins are arranged, this capacitor stands upright. You can get them both vertical and horizontal, but in this stereo they are they are oriented vertically, so they're they're pretty easy to find. Lots of them for sale on eBay. And you just got to put it all back together. Now a little a little careful on this back plate here. These cables are kind of short and they break real easy. You know, and then you have to find yourself resoldering re them, assuming you know exactly where they broke off from. Now, when you're reassembling, one thing to keep in mind, this little volume slider has got to line up with the volume slider on the board, because when you pull that board back, they separate. Okay, there's a little notch there to where you can match them up. The hard part about reassembling this thing is there's so darn many holes, connectors, and everything that have to line up all at once. Remember the one screw that holds that board in? Very important. Okay, here it is all put back together again after replacing that memory capacitor. That memory capacitor should hold, uh, really, if, if not hours, possibly even days. If you lose power, it will remember those. It will remember your stations for many, many, many hours. 
So definitely worth replacing. And, and those, those capacitors are problematic. It's for, for a capacitor that old, if you have one of these devices and it's that old, I can almost guarantee it. If that memory capacitor has never been replaced, it will almost certainly need to be. Okay, that's it.